In this video, we are going to learn about linear programming. Now, linear programming is a method for finding a minimum or a maximum value of some quantity given a set of constraints. Now, constraints are these linear inequalities that we create. And usually we find them in a system when doing linear programming problems. Now, when we get a graph of that system, that is known as the feasible region. This is where our solutions lie. It's where we shade in, where they all intersect. And with linear programming, if we're looking for a maximum or a minimum, we usually have some sort of objective function, usually like P stands for profit, where we plug in points from the feasible region to see which one would give us a maximum. So now let's start to solve this problem here on the right. What points in the feasible region, given these constraints, maximizes P for the objective function P equals 2x plus y? Now first we just need to graph the inequalities, which forces us to put these into slope-intercept form. So solving both these equations for y, we get 2y is less than or equal to negative x plus 5. Divided by 2, we get y is less than or equal to negative 1 half x plus 5 halves. So that gives us a y-intercept of 5 halves, which is about 2.5, and a slope of negative 1 half, so which means down 1 to the right 2, down one to the right two, down one to the right two, and we get a little bit off my grid there. But now I'm gonna use a straight edge, draw me a straight line. And my solutions for this will be everything below that red line. The other equation is a little bit easier Solve, we have to subtract x, give us negative y is less than or equal to negative x plus 2. And then we have to divide by a negative one, which is going to cause this inequality to flip. So we have now y is greater than or equal to x minus 2. So a y-intercept of negative 2. And a slope of 1, so up 1 over 1. And so on and so forth. And take your straight edge and draw a line. And everything that is above the screen line. And lastly, we have two implicit constraints. This says that x has to be positive and y has to be positive. So we, we are going to be within the first quadrants. This gives us our feasible region right here. So now we form the feasible region by graphing our inequalities. Now we need to find the coordinates of each vertex. And the reason why we want to do this is that if there is a maximum or minimum value of the linear objective function, it must occur at one of these vertices. And a good rationale for that is if we took our objective function and we solved it for y, we would get negative 2x plus p. That just gives our y-intercept could be anything but with a slope of negative 2. And if you follow this negative 2 slope and follow along, you'll always get like a maximum to the right, a minimum to the left, but following that slope. So we just need to test the vertices to see which one would give us a maximum or a minimum, since that will usually be the farthest point along an, an objective function that gives the highest y-intercept. But we'll see here, uh, we have, let's say, Q will be this bottom left corner, we have R at the top left corner, S to be the rightmost corner, and T to be this bottom right corner. Now, the bottom left corner is our origin, so that's at the point zero, zero. R is at the point zero, or zero, 2.5, or zero, 0.5 halves. S is at the point 1, 2, 3, 1. So 3, 1. And T is at the point uh, 2, 0. Now we're going to take all of these points and plug them into this objective function to see which one gives us the largest value. So plug it in 0, 0, we get 2 times 0 plus 0, which is just 0. And we don't stop there, that's most likely the minimum, but we're going to plug in all four points before we decide which one is going to be our maximum. Plug it in 0, we get 2 times 0 
plus 2.5, which is just 2.5. Next we have for s, we have 2 times 3 plus 1, which gives us 7. And lastly, we have 2 times 2 plus 0, which gives us 4. Now looking at all these numbers, it's very clear that 7 is our biggest number, so that would be our maximum. So I'll put a little max here, and that is our maximum. And just to indicate that we also found our minimum, the lowest number is our minimum value. But since we're looking for the maximum, I'm just going to box in 7. Now, let's look at this same feasible region, but what happens if we change our objective function? Meaning, instead of 2x plus y, we make it x plus 3y. Does that change where our maximum lies? Is it, is it going to still be at 3, 1? Well, let's find out. First, let's plug in 0, 0. That still gives us 0. 0, 2.5. So 0 plus 3 times 2.5. This gives us 7.5, which is already bigger than our max before. So this could be our maximum. Plug it in S, we get 3 plus 3 times 1, which is 6. And then plug it in T, we get 2 plus 3 times 0, which is 2. And it does look like our, our maximum shifted to this point over here. Give us 7.5 to be our max. And again, if we use that same logic, if we were to solve this for y, we get a slope of negative one-third and some y-intercept. So you just watch this, down one over three, and we shift it, that'll be the maximum point. And as I keep shifting down, this will be the minimum point. If I keep that same slope, I can kind of shift around and see for myself. And that is how you use linear programming to find a maximum or minimum of some objective function.